Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, uh, Dharma Pranam, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, thank you, Guru Maharaj, for joining today's call to enlighten us. Hare dear do devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, today, Guru Maharaj will continue to enlighten us on the topic, the pure devotional service from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Leela, chapter 22, verse uh, 64. Okay. Well, we had set aside a particular day uh, for talking and discussing the holy name. So since we are in New Year's Eve and um, devotees are gearing up for programs tonight, I think, in different places, um, I thought I'd focus on the holy name, especially with the new year coming up. And that will be the subject for tonight. Um, tomorrow, um, I'm not sure if I can make it, but in my next, my next class with the devotees, I'll speak about new year's resolutions. And tonight we'll speak on the holy name. And my speaking on the holy name tonight is going to be a little bit of a different format. Um, and I'll explain. Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namane Namaste Saras Pati Deve Gauravani Pachari Me Nirvase Sasunya Vadi Pasyatya Deya Satayane Panchakopa Tarubis Chakri Pasindu Deve Vachapati Tanam Pavane Gyo Vaishnave Gyo Namaho Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadada Resivasa Vigora Bhakta Vindu Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So I was thinking we'll try a little experiment and see how far the experiment can be successful. And the experiment would be to uh, I'm going to be reading uh, quotations, statements by Srila Prabhupada on the Holy Name. Most of it's instructive in terms of giving advice to devotees. And it comes in the form of his lectures, his uh, books, um, his letters, his conversations. These are a variety of ways that Prabhupada communicated uh, advice about the Holy Name, both the practical chanting of the Holy Name, which is mostly the essential principle of the advice that will enter into it, but there's also a lot about the glories of the Holy Name. Mm -hmm. And um, what I'll do, these uh, little statements are more, no longer and more, no more than three or four lines long. And um, after I each read each one, um, devotees, we want devotees to think what I said and see if there is some reason to ask a question based on what is said. Uh, get a clarification on what is said, give a realization on what is said, give a personal experience on what is said, uh, something that will inspire some conversation based on this uh, reading. If I say something and no one speaks, then I'll just go on to the next one until someone actually comes forward and uh, says so all you have to do is just uh, write something in the chat or best just raise your hand and then uh, Suda will be very 
attentive to make sure to see who's raising their hand and then we can uh, we can go on uh, we can let that person speak something about what i had read okay so these are very instructive coming all from his divine grace and there's different uh, as they say different mediums by which he gave these instructions um, so I'll read the first one. This one is from a Bhagavad Gita lecture in Hyderabad, November 23, 1972. It was a, it's from uh, Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, verse number 18. And this is a quotation from that lecture. By hearing and chanting, the dirty things within the heart will be cleansed. Then you will understand what is your position in relationship with God. You will understand what is God. So I'll, uh, I'll comment a few words on each one. Um, the dirty things in the heart are the material desires, material attachments, material connections that... Um, overshadow our relationship with the Supreme Lord. In other words, uh, material consciousness. These are called dirty things because when the heart is clean, the heart reflects its natural purity. And then when one hears the holy name, then one will understand Krishna and one's relationship with Krishna. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll go on to the next one. Distraction and chanting. This one is from Harinam Chintame, uh, spoken by Srila Haridas Thakur and written by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Distraction and chanting produces a type of illusion, causing serious offenses against the holy name that are difficult to overcome. This illusion leads to craving for wealth, women, position, success, and cheating. When these material attractions cover the heart, and one loses interest in chanting the holy names of the Lord. So distraction, distraction away from the holy name and distraction towards um, the illusionary features of the material energy, such as these mentioned here, a craving for something material. Yes. As Lord Chaitanya says, I don't want followers, I don't want wealth, I don't want the pleasures of the opposite sex. I don't even want to be known as a great proponent of Vedic knowledge. I simply want Janmani Janmani Ishwari Bhavata Bhakti Ohoi Chuki Tvai. He's praying. He is simply expressing from a point of view of a conditioned soul that what is the real happiness in life, service to the Lord, and willing to accept service life after life, not even wanting to go back home, back to Godhead, and not attracted by the illusions or the uh, distractions that come in the form of material happiness, as it's mentioned here. Position, power, pleasures of the opposite sex. Oh. When these things happen, one's heart becomes covered and one starts losing interest in chanting. Uh, last person um, has something to share, uh, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Raj hmm? Prabhu, yeah. Thank you. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, I just wanted to ask a question. Sometimes uh, the distraction is there, but the distraction is not on. Sometimes that distraction is 
still on something spiritual so it's still on krishna but it's away from the holy name so is that still offensive and it does it is that still on those grounds that you said that it leads to uh lust and dirt within the heart no no anything devotional even if it's not the holy name is not is not sinful and it's not material except that and this will be brought out in other statements that one is losing the opportunity to connect with the holy name it's a kind of indetention that uh, relegates one to mechanical type of chanting and then when one starts chanting mechanically although one is still chanting one's mind is on something else uh, the idea is to bring it back to hearing the sound and then of course we can explore different ways by which one can increase the quality of one's hearing but in answer to your question the point is that no it's not sinful and it's not material it's just not absorption in the holy name that's all and if you continue on that way you'll start to you know find these other thoughts and ideas more uh, satisfying than hearing the holy name Better, when you get sometimes devotees get ideas for their service when they chant um, best to let those ideas go and then try to re go re re connect to those ideas after your japa session is completed but another way and this is a little bit risky but it does it is a way We've seen that sometimes we just get an idea that it seems to be very important in our Krishna conscious practice. We take a pencil and paper and we write it down and then we leave it alone and we don't go back to it until later on when we're finished with our japa. But the danger is that you'll chant in order to get ideas. <laughs> So that should not be the, the motivation for chanting. If they come, you may do that. You may write it down and then forget about it. Or you might, might even forget, it, forget about it. Sometimes I get ideas, I write them down. Sometimes I get ideas and I just say, well, let me see if that idea still comes back when I'm done chanting. And if it does, that means it's important. When it if it doesn't, that means it wasn't important. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay, thank you. Uh, Hare Krishna, uh, Guru Maharaj, thank you so much. I wanted to share the same experience. Even I have that experience. Like uh, most of the time, when I chant, I think about like you know services what service I can do. I'll be planning on like, you know, next week I can do this like that. So, um, and it will, uh, until I finish my chanting, I keep on thinking about it. And it's very hard for me to divert um, from that ideas. Um, yeah, we do, we, everyone has a particular nature. And your nature may be that you like to do service and you find inspiration when you get ideas how to do more service or how to do better service. So that resonates you with you. Uh, but it's not men, it's not recommended during the chanting process. So as I say, in your case, is write it down and then you have to forget it. You have to force your mind to go back to the chanting of the hearing the sound because those ideas if you let, write them down they'll be there when you get done don't worry okay mm -hmm. so and, sorry yeah if you and by thinking about it you're just wasting time 
So when the thought comes, we should chanting and we have to write it down and then we have to the chant. You know, I, as I mentioned to Raj, sometimes you may write it down and sometimes you may not. But if you get in the habit of writing everything down, you'll be writing your whole job period. You know? <laughs> then you'll have so much service to do, you won't have any time for chanting. <laughs> So, uh, it's still considered an attention, mm -hmm. and if it, if it becomes too strong, then it will lead to offenses. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, try to understand that when we connect with the holy name, we're connecting with something very pure and very powerful. We want that connection. We should think, I want to connect. I want to lock myself in where the holy name is resonating and I'm hearing. That's all. That we want to strive to reach. We should have that as a goal. If we don't have, if we don't understand deeper the glories of the holy name and the importance of chanting, that this that determined desire to connect to the holy name may be watered down by our, all of these other thoughts that appear in our mind. So we say, no, we have to be, we have, that's why we have to hear the glories of the holy name regularly to increase the, to increase our enthusiasm to hear and chant nicely. Okay, very much. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. So so developing the mood by hearing the glories of uh, chanting is very important. Then. Yeah. yeah, when you when you hear the glories of the, of the holy name, you can always understand that whatever is being glorified is far less than what is actually the reality. Mm. Krishna's name is Krishna. Krishna. It's not a representation of Krishna, it is Krishna. Now we make that duality that the name represents Krishna. No, it's not like that. The name is Krishna. He incarnates in sound. So the holy name is the sound incarnation of Krishna, which is non different than the Krishna in Goloka Vindana. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Shamrani Mataji, uh, Shamrani Devi Dasi Mataji has a question. Mataji, please, mm -hmm. uh, she has something to share, please. From my humble opinion, say some to your lotus feet, all gosh, to Srila Prabhupada, all gosh, to you very much. So, um, I always um, uh, um, ask most of the time that um, when I'm chanting, it keep coming in my uh, mind when I'm chanting that. Uh, 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 please, um, uh, Jagannath, uh, keep me safe and sound from the attack of Maya. So, um, is that offensive, Guru Maharaj? Or no, that's nice. That's nice. That's devotion. We can pray to the holy name while we're chanting the holy name also. But not continuously. We make prayers occasionally while we're chanting to reconnect ourselves with the with the with the holy name, or can I make that connection stronger? We have to understand we can't chant attentively. It's not possible. There's no way we can chant attentively uh, without praying to chant attentively. Unless you pray to chant attentively, this is a statement by Srila Bhakti Vinoda. No one can chant attentively unless they actually pray to chant attentively. And that means the ability to chant attentively is coming from Krishna, not you. But he's, he's fulfilling your desire when your desire is pure.
Thank so, you so much. Part of chanting is praying to chant. You're praying to Jagannath, you're praying to Lord Chaitanya, you're praying to Srila Prabhupada. That's nice. And it's recommended. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. That's answer my question. Hey, Krishna. Raj Prabhu, you have any um, realization like to share? Yeah. I see and uh, Yes, just a quick thing. Uh, I was just picking up the point that Maharaj, you were saying about uh, Krishna. Krishna's name is Krishna. And I was thinking of this morning when I was chanting, I was thinking, Krishna's, I was thinking along those lines, thinking, like if, if somebody asked you to carry their deity, even if it's only like two feet from, from here to there, you would be extremely careful, naturally, you'd be extremely careful in how you do that. Uh, but so, and when we're chanting, and it's, it's like we're carrying the deity or, uh, of Krishna on our tongue. So we're, if we focus on that point, then we become extremely careful about pronouncing every single syllable nicely. Correct, yeah. Sometimes we say chanting Hare Krishna is like dressing the deity. Uh, it is, it actually is. We're dressing the deity with our devotion as we sound the sound his holy name. It's a devotion that's decorating the deity, and the Lord has come to accept our service. Yeah. That's a nice analogy, and it's actually very, very right to the point. Yeah. Careful, conscious of, yeah. So always bring your mind back to the sound. And when you see your mind going somewhere else, you know, again, uh, sometimes you have to offer a prayer in order to bring it back fully. But that that part that prayer is like you know the extra the extra concern we put in carrying the deity very nice yeah Devotees, you have any personal realizations? I can, I'll continue with our reading. Okay. okay. Okay, next one. With firm determination. Nishchaya means with firm determination. Yes, I have begun chanting. Maybe there are fences, but if I continue, Krishna will be pleased to place me on the transcendental platform when I shall relish what is what is this chanting of Hare Krishna? So determination, even if there's some offenses, offenses means there's no taste to the chanting. It simply becomes dry. But keep chanting. Don't be discouraged by lack of taste. Or even if the mind is wandering here and there, continue to, again, bring it back as Krishna mentions in the Bhagavad Gita. Wherever the whenever, whenever and wherever the mind wanders due to its unsteady and flickering nature, bringing it back under the control of the self. We'll keep bringing it back to the sound of Krishna's name and never get discouraged determination. Determination is fortified by good association and by giving up sense gratification. When there's excessive amount of sense gratification in our day-to-day -day life, our determination is watered down. Every time we say no to Maya and continue on with Krishna, our determination 
is strengthened, it's nourished, it becomes stronger. Every time we give in to Maya, and then our determination, the our determination reading is dropped to a lower decibel. So giving up sense gratification and learning how to say no to sense gratification or those things that are not favorable for devotional service, then we can increase the quality of our chanting through the determined effort we make. Determination is the feature of the will. It's, what, it's probably one of the most important principles in any activity in any sphere of life, even material, determined to succeed despite what is going on or even with when the reverses come. Alba said the difference between a human being and an animal is determination. A human, an animal cannot be determined because soon as it gets fearful by hearing a noise that it can't identify with, it goes in a different direction. A human being can tolerate and continue in a determined way. Determination is so important. Srimati Devi Dasi Mataji, as a want to share Mataji, go ahead. Okay. Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance as always to Srila Prabhupada. <clears throat> and thank you so much uh, uh, for giving this point to Guru Maharaj determination. And uh, uh, even I want, I have a small realization like when we are chant, when I'm chanting, um, so I see that sometimes I get a lot of distractions and a lot of inattention, but um, I always remember your words, like in, in your previous classes also, you said, like, even if you are distracted, you keep on chanting. So I don't want to stop chanting and uh, I just do it. And uh, I also realized that when we, when I am materially too much attached and uh, having <clears throat> association of non-devotees and relatives like that, so at the time also, I feel like my chanting is going down and I'm not um, fully concentrating and all that. But um, I, I always remember that I have, no matter what I have to chant, uh, I have to get this taste and um, I have to, I'll, I'll always think about Krishna and I pray to him, like, please um, get me out of this and uh, please uh, um, give me the taste. So um, determination is the main basic um, uh, ingredient. Um, I, I feel, Guru Maharaj. Um, yeah. That, yeah, you have, because you have that faith in the instructions and also faith in Krishna and the holy name, despite what is happening, even though it appears to be going in a different direction, continue. Yes, we have, you know, we've been in the material world for many lifetimes. So to come to the perfectional stage doesn't come so quickly. We have to stay fixed in the process and gradually it works. And another feature of determination is it, it, it shows Krishna that we're serious and that, that inspires Krishna to, to give more mercy. Yeah, and uh, I also noticed that um, when I chant only one or two rounds and stop, I'll not get the taste. Um, but when I chant for continuously for half an hour to one hour, or at least at a time, I, if I finish uh, 16 rounds um, at a time, then only I'll get some happiness and uh, um, right. in my through my chanting. Uh, good yeah, that's true. Yeah, continue. We shouldn't be chanting like one, two, three rounds and then putting it aside and chant later. Go for long periods of chanting. That forces one to become more attentive and gradually opens up the mercy of the Holy Name. I chant 16 rounds before I do anything. Sometimes I break it up a little bit 
with a little something in the middle. But I won't take breakfast until I finish 16 rounds. Uh, sometimes I have to go to the temple for some of the temple functions. So it interferes with my chanting. But other times I'll just sit and chant 16 rounds and finish my rounds like that. It's not a matter of just finishing it, but we continue to keep chanting, the taste comes from becomes nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, sir. Chanting is nice. It's easy also. <laughs> Thank you, Mataji. Uh, Raj Prabhu, do uh, you have anything to share? Uh, see your eyes turn. Uh, thank you. I was just try picking up on a point that Maharaj you said about uh, we show determination and effort and, and that attracts the Lord's mercy. And that I was going to ask because uh, it feels like we can only we can only go so far with our chanting and a part of a part of that success in the chanting is by the Lord helping us. Uh, and I just want uh, wanted to see if how much that was true, because I don't know if it's just a theory that I come up with or if it's actually true that we we put in the effort and we get yeah. desire, but then it's up to the Lord. You'll have experiences sometimes, this happens to devotees, where you'll be chanting. And even if you're not really trying to be attentive, you're attentive. That means Krishna's mercy is just flowing. And it's practically effortless. Even if you find yourself distracted for a second or so, that distraction is not even a distraction. It just appears to be. You get so connected with the holy name. That happens when you chant in holy places, like when you chant in Vrindavan or you chant in uh, Mayapur or really sacred places when this put a spiritual energy is much more prominent. But in any case, try to create an environment where you just continue to chant no matter what. That's why we have to keep hearing about the glories of the Holy Name so we become convinced that there's nothing higher, nothing more pure in offering service to the Lord than chanting His Holy Name. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Prabhuji. Uh, devotees, uh, any uh, realizations, personal experience, I would encourage if you can turn on your camera and share. I can read again another one. Okay, good. Krishna, Krishna will give you all protection is the title. This is from, this is a letter Prabhupada wrote on March 16, March 6, 1970 to a devotee named Govardhan. If you stick to the principles of regular chanting Hare Krishna and executing devotional service, Krishna will give you all protection in all circumstances of life. That's pretty powerful to think about that. All protection in all circumstances of life. If we stick to this chanting on a regular basis and maintain, your, maintain regularity in devotional service. Okay, let's see here. Hmm. This is from a Bhakti Vedanta purport from Srimad Bhagavatam 4.8.53. This is a question that comes up occasionally about should we place the form of the Lord in our mind and then chant. It's entitled, Without Extra Endeavor. 
The chanting, the chanter, the chanter, therefore has to concentrate on hearing the vibration. And without any extra endeavor on his part, the Lord will automatically appear. So when we get, get absorbed in chanting the holy names of the Lord, that form of the Lord, which we're accustomed to, or something that we maybe we've seen recently, will appear in the mind automatically. No extra endeavor is needed. Yeah, Raj please go ahead. Okay, uh, just a quick question. Is it is it wrong to endeavour to visualise uh, the Lord in your mind whilst chanting? Here, yeah, this is the answer. It's not wrong, but it's it's it'll happen automatically if you're hearing the sound vibration. If you try to surreptitiously place the Lord's form in your mind, you might find it impossible to do. It'll be in and out. Here it comes automatically. We've all experienced that. All of a sudden, there's the form of Krishna. It comes into the mind. You see, you go to the temple, you see the beautiful form of the deity. And now that same form has we've been reawakened in your mind through the chanting. Okay. Sometimes I find that I don't get the I don't get that form of the Lord coming to my mind, but sometimes when I find that maybe my mind is going a little bit astray or I'm not focusing enough, I will I will recall the image of a Lord Juggernaut and just beg him to help me. Oh, that's all right. That prayer is is important. Thank you, Mara. It's like when you go in contact with a big with an important person, you don't just sit there and stare at them. You say something. <laughs> so you're saying something is the prayer you offer. Yeah. Here's a quick one. Simply chant and hear, that's all. And every every perfection will come gradually, without a doubt. That's from the Bhagavad Gita lecture. Here's another one. It's not sufficient for us to chant 16 rounds, but we must endeavor to chant offenselessly 16 rounds. Even we must be always chanting Hare Krishna. Why only 16 rounds? So this idea of 16 is not our maximum. It's actually the beginning of human life. 16 rounds are the minimum and one who has a taste for chanting will want to chant more. And even if the taste doesn't come, chant more. This, uh, this uh, somewhat, this uh, lockdown that somehow is still going on in some places in the world, maybe not uh, going on so much, but uh, causes one to have extra time and we can find, all right, I got extra time, let me chant Hare Krishna. Why not? Yeah. Uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, I just want to share this experience, um, uh, especially like uh, chanting more than 16 rounds. Um, when my chanting is very good, when it's attentive, I see the 16 rounds are done very fast and uh, I get that encouragement to do more and I don't feel tired. But when my chanting is not attentive, even doing 16 rounds, I feel like very strugglesome. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, you just, you just explain something that is a reality. Okay. It's true. Hmm. When you're hearing nicely, it goes quickly because of the concentration. 
through, through concentration, speed automatically increases and absorption increases. And when you're not, each round takes so long. <laughs> yes, Kunash, even just doing eight rounds sometimes it takes me like uh, an hour and a half. But when I really do nicely in 16 rounds, I can finish up in one hour. Yeah, okay. that's, that's true. Good. So we recommend that when you begin your chanting very carefully, connect with the holy names through very clear and very per, 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 precise chanting. You'll see on Srila Prabhupada's Japa tape, he, uh, he always starts out slow. And then you'll see as the tape continues, the speed of the chanting increases automatically. So that's how it works. Through concentration, speed comes naturally. And then 16 rounds will actually seem really fast. And other times it'll seem forever. Thank you. Graj Prabhu has to share. All right, I have a question again. When you use the word chanting, I just want to understand the meaning of the word chanting because there's chanting when you have your beads and you're chanting the maha mantra on your beads. But then can other things count during the rest of the day? Can other things count as chanting? So if you were hearing or if you are reading from the Bhagavatam out loud, or hearing, because uh, sometimes people loosely, I don't know if they, they count as chanting in another sense. It is, it's chanting. Anytime you speak the glories of the Lord, that's chanting. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. That's, it. that's that's the statement of my Prabhupada, yeah. Okay, I'll read some more. Krishna is there. When we chant Hare Krishna mantra, we should know Krishna is there. Therefore, we should be very much cautious and respectful, not neglectful. That is an offense. Yeah, you have to understand you're, you're connecting with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, so one has to be very respectful and at the same time very attentive. Having such faith, thus one should understand that the name Krishna and Krishna himself are identical. Having such faith, one must continue to chant the holy names. That's from Chaitanya Charitamrita. So yeah, Krishna's name and Krishna are identical. It's pretty hard for uh, the average person to understand that. For the average person, they can't understand it. Even for devotees, it sounds like, okay, I agree with that, but what does it actually mean? And that's explained that all of the, all of the qualities, all of the forms, all of the pastimes, all of the names, everything uh, of the nature of the absolute truth is contained within the name of Krishna. And these things will also appear as one chance because Krishna's name includes Krishna with all of his characteristics, his qualities, his activities, his forms, his names. It becomes, it's like the concentrated form of Krishna in the sound manifestation of Krishna, which unravels itself or unpacks itself according to the devotion of the chanter. 
And when chanting is on the highest level of purity, you see Krishna face to face. On different. <laughs> Hare Krishna Kumara, I just had a realization when you were saying, I really like that point that, um, you know, it's just came in my mind that Krishna reveals himself, um, you know, according to the mood we chant. So um, it's entirely up to us um, that whatever mood we chant in, which he, um, that mood he approached to us. Yeah. If you try to finish your rounds, rather than connect with Krishna, more like we call it beat the clock japa. If that's our mood, that's what we'll do. We'll get 16 rounds and then we'll be nothing different than when, when we started. <laughs> we will gain absolutely hard, practically nothing. But if we're, my dear Lord, Ayi nanda tanu jikinkaram patitam mam vishyame bhavam buddha pripayata vapada pankaja stita duli savisham bhija. O son of Maharaj Nanda Krishna, I am your eternal servant. Somehow or other I've fallen to this ocean of birth and death. Please pick me up from the ocean of death and place me as one of the atoms that you're noticing. This, the fifth, this fifth prayer from the uh, Shikshastakam is a recommended prayer to make during and even during the time we are chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Of course, we make it with all sincerity, but that is a recommended prayer. I fall into this ocean of birth and death, and the material world is compared to a vast ocean. And in the vast ocean, there are so many dangers. And no one can swim in the ocean and expect to exist there, unless one is a fish, of course. But anyone, even, the, even an Olympic swimmer, cannot stay in an ocean and, and survive because mm, they get tired after a while. Uh, so this material world is like this grand ocean. The more you try to get out of it materially, the deeper you go into it. So the holy name is the lifeboat to pick you out, pick you up from the ocean and bring you to the shore, Krishna's lotus feet. Thank you, Mataji. Namrata Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna. Uh, I hope my voice is clear. Is it? Hare Krishna. Yes, it's clear. Yeah. Okay. Uh, please accept my humble obeisance, Maharaj. Um, so I wanted to ask um, the whenever I'm chanting in early morning, it happens that um, I many times get a lot of. Uh, you know, uh, realizations or you know, instructions what you have given during the classes. So uh, you many times reflect during my uh, chanting time. Maybe this is because, uh, you know, in the previous night I've heard your lecture and then I'm going to sleep. Uh, so how should I understand this? Um, it, many times there are uh, you know instructions even from very old uh, uh, lectures as well but i during my chanting i many time you know recollect those recollect those uh, instructions well so yeah try to understand okay you're getting a that that recollection is happening for a reason and if it's happening during chanting, Krishna is reminding you of something that you need to remember or you need to avoid, either one. 
Take it like that. Take it as Krishna's arrangement that these things appear. And uh, try to learn from that. Okay. Yeah. Krishna works through the mind and he comes through in that way. So, yeah. Then you have to see how does it apply? How can I apply it or how does it apply to me? Okay. Yeah, this is this is mercy actually. Okay, I should take. Uh, I was just concerned that this uh, coming of these thoughts are not, you know, just mind playing or distracting during the chanting. I mean, well, as far yeah. as I was just thinking, it. We spoke about that earlier. The thoughts and the instructions. The best to go back to the sound vibration. Well, sometimes we note something in the mind when it's happening, and okay, I learned something. And we talked about the importance that maybe writing something down in order to remember it, but not making it that a, a uh, regular feature of our chanting. We have to keep hearing. That's the most important thing. Just keep hearing. That hearing is the way to connect with the sound. Once the sound, once you connect with the sound, then you're 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 with Krishna. Okay. Okay. So basic purpose should be. Uh, I mean, the main purpose should be connecting with the sound, and then I. Uh, you know, recollect this instruction in between. I should just, you know, keep in mind and, you know, analyze yeah. it. And sometimes you can write them down, and sometimes I, we spoke about this at the beginning of the talk. Uh, maybe you missed that part. Uh, we uh, we'll just uh, sometimes write it down to recall it after when we're done chanting, or sometimes we just forget it. If it comes back later, then that means it was important. If it didn't, well, maybe it's not so important. The mind is full of the more the mind is full of thousands and millions of thoughts. When uh, Yamaraj, in the form of a yaksha, was speaking to his son uh, Yudhisthira. He said that he was asking him so many questions. And one of the questions was, what's, what's more numerous than the blades, blades of grass on earth? And Yudhisthira answered, the thoughts and the minds of men. The mind is filled with thoughts, impressions, desires, from not only this life, but from many, many previous lives. And it's not it's not our business to try to sort everything out. Try to just get back to the center and the holy name and just hear nicely. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Hey, Krishna. Hare Krishna. Um, Guru Maharaj, okay. I have a question. Sorry, can I ask a question? Yeah, go on. Okay, yeah. Uh, Guru Maharaj, my question is about like uh, uh, impressions uh, and uh, thoughts that we collected like from so many, like, uh, you know, since childhood and also previous life. I know since we came here we were chanting, but we might not, we are not doing your attentive chanting, but still we are chanting. So definitely I've seen a change, but uh, the impressions, the thoughts, which we collected from so many, like, you know, since childhood, it will go away or it will come back. Like um, it will be erased uh, permanently or is there any chance that it will come back? Yeah, there's a chance it can come back. But 
you're creating uh, or you're becoming Krishna conscious. That means your consciousness is starting to build uh, on thoughts, desires, activities, all related to Krishna. So that will continue to increase as you continue in your devotional service. And these other thoughts may or not may or may not appear. The mind is very um, the mind is chanchala, it's flickering. It can bring up something from the past. It can project about something that is not even true. The mind is filled with these things. We have to learn to neglect that. If something comes up from the past, then uh, we just say, well, you know, like one of the things that I noticed during this Two, two years of somewhat restricted travel. We call it a lockdown. Although when I first, when the first, when the lockdown first happened in March of 2020, and then it went on for about a, about a year for me. During that time, after a few months of lockdown, I was getting flashbacks of places and people that I had been with in my Krishna conscious travels, all of a sudden I would be back in, you know, Abbey, Abbey Rams in North Carolina's bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> or I would be uh, in India, you know, sitting with some devotees talking that I that happened many years ago. In other words, my, the mind would just go back to these flashbacks of things in the past for no reason. They would come up and then they would disappear. Mm -hmm. So that's the nature of the mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the stronger our desire for Krishna consciousness, the more you'll start to bring up constant your thoughts and desires that are related to Krishna. But the mind, the mind is never really fully controlled because it's just, even on the higher levels, the mind still has a tendency to wander. It's just the way it is. Okay. You just don't pay attention to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it'll be coming, it won't go away completely, but we need to start developing. It'll, re it'll reduce. What will go away is those things that are that are opposed to Krishna consciousness. Those things will go away first. And then gradually, just general thoughts will still be lingering. And then, then those gradually reduce also. Okay. Krishna consciousness means, means conscious of Krishna. Always. Mm -hmm. Even when you're sleeping, you dream about Krishna or something related to devotional life. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Um, I don't see any questions. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll end here, and uh, tomorrow is the beginning of the new year and. We wish everyone a, what we say, a prosperous Krishna conscious new year, prosperous. And uh, tomorrow I'm going to try to come and make our class. Srimati can note this. Uh, we have a yagya in the temple and uh, it may cause me to be late for the class or not make it at all. The yagya starts at 3.30 our time, which is 2.30 your time, or 2.30 UK time. So if I can finish in an hour and a half, I'll be here. But that yagya is pretty intense. So, um, yeah. So we'll, the next topic we'll speak on either tomorrow or the day after will be New Year's resolutions. 
the importance of making resolutions, the importance of understanding how to make a resolution, and the importance of learning how, what are the principles that allow us to stick to our resolutions. Mm -hmm. So that hopefully I'll do that tomorrow. Suda, Suda, your your voice is off now. So. Oh, sorry, Kirmaj. Thank you so much for your valuable time and association, and thank you for enlightening on this topic, Holy Name. Thank you. Yeah, please bless us that we should do a chanting. <laughs> thank you. My obeisances to everyone. Panchakalpa thru vishya kripa sindhu veva cha putitanam tamnibyo vaishnavibyo maha pur bhaktavrinda ki jai. I hope everyone is going to a Hare Krishna New Year's party. <laughs> if you don't have one to go to, just get a quick ticket and come to Slovenia. We'll be starting two hours and we'll be going on and on with some of the best kirtan ears and on the planet. Is it uh, telecasted? Is it broadcasted, Guru Maharaj? On my uh, I'm not sure, but you can check the, 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 the uh, normal stream for Ljubljana's cast. Okay. okay. Yeah. Nima is going to be there. If you know Nima, he's one of the best kirtan leaders in, in London. Well, he's, yeah. he's with us. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And there are others. So right now the devotees are out on Harinam Sankirtan. They want today night is Maha Harinam from four o'clock p.m. to seven thirty. They went out for three and a half hours tonight, and then at eight o'clock we have our temple program. So uh, yeah, do something because whatever you do on at the first day in the New Year's is what will set the stage for the rest of the year. That's good, Maharaj. Yes, Thank you. Celebrate in a Krishna conscious manner. We take advantage of all these celebrations that the secular world arranges. So for devotees to come together and Krishnaize it, make it Krishna conscious. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, uh, this is Amrita. Uh, with your mercy, with the uh, mercy of Guru and Gauranga, our plan to uh, come to Dakor, uh, you know, it's a holy place uh, where there is a uh, uh, Ranchorji's uh, temple. So we are celebrating oh. 31st. Well, oh, that's nice, Dakori, yeah. And, uh, yes, Maharaj, and tomorrow on, at the, uh, on the first day of 2022, uh, I think we are going to attend the Mangla Arti. So I'm quite happy about it. Oh, wow, that's, that will be auspicious and very, very uh, much a foundation for the rest of the year. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. It was uh, the, the plan was canceled and again made up. So I am really uh, feeling merciful from Krishna and Guru. So thank you all. And the Vaishnavas as well. Okay. Hare Krishna. Daisi Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasari Gaur, Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama.
Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Take care.